Dane and Derek is an uncensored, unfiltered podcast. You can find content warnings in the episode description. Thank you for listening. Hello, hello. Good morning, wherever you are in the world. Welcome back to Dane and Derek in our little corner of the internet. My name is Derek, and I'm a writer, director, filmmaker, person, but that doesn't matter today. Uh, I'm going to toss it over to Dane. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Dane. Uh, Derek, what time is it for you right now? It's like 8 a.m. And I, for full disclosure, I went to bed at like 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> so I'm really running on the fumes. Cool, cool. Because I got I got in here today and I was like, you know, last time I brought like all the energy and that's that's awesome and good. But this morning I am sore as shit. Oh, and, I'm also sore. And so I was like, and like I am, I I have had a week. Like, oh my God, I have had a week. Um. And so I was like, I'm hoping, I'm hoping I can split. And then you're like, it's 8 a.m. And I was like, no, I must be here. So I'm fucking here. I'm Dane. <laughs> I write. I do law things. I love both of the people here. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to fucking say much more because we have a guest today. Did Taylor. you miss me? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Fucking, what are we even talking about? Yes. Dude. So, hi. Again, I'm Taylor. If you don't recognize me from the titular episode, Taylor Markshausen. Um, or the 10,000 other things we've all done I together. Mean, yeah, that too. If you don't the, recognize like, my voice. 150 hours of audio you and I have that's still releasing. Is um, that how much we recorded? I Okay, so Derek and I actually had a quick conversation about it and I took a look. Um, so it's, I, I believe at the end of it all... Um, it's it's about 60 episodes and most of the Ooh. episodes are are about and this is this is just this is just um saren um yeah and it's like about oh, so not even season two uh yeah not even talking about the <laughs> yeah no um and so that <laughs> is like about an hour and a half an episode so yeah it's closing on 150 um it, it, yeah it's over a hundred hours of that and then anyways all i'm saying is that i i stopped we stopped doing releasing new episodes of um diceology like um almost a year ago now and that's crazy yeah and but the thing is i've been re-releasing Saren, and it's still going like yeah. it's very <laughs> funny for me like i'm like wow that's just we made a lot anyways yeah, yeah so it's everybody going, should recognize you and I'm talking over your intro now. I'm so sorry. I brought the energy <laughs> and now it's dominating everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you talk about dominating energy because I am here to talk about your two's zodiac charts. Pew, pew, Yay. pew, pew. Wee, wee, wee. <laughs> Derek, have you gotten your zodiac charts done before? No. I mean, the best I've had is CoStar, the app. That is most people's experience with astrology in this day and age, which frankly is more in depth than it used to be, but still Fair not enough. everything. Fair enough. For me, I've had a couple of experiences with it. My partner, Gracie, is is very into it. She does my my chart every once in a while and she'll tell Hell it to yeah. me and I'll get very excited about it and then it will all vanish from my mind, um, <laughs> which is good and bad, right? Like I totally pay attention. I listen very closely. Um, but it does mean she gets to do it over and over again. So silver linings there. Um, For sure. My mom's mom, my grandma, was is super into all of this. She did my whole chart the day I was born um, and then told me about it when I was very little and provided me with candy um, to <laughs> sit and listen very nicely. Um, and then... That's uh, going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> and then my, my step-grandmother, uh, who was Japanese she uh did one um in a completely different uh no, no Aquarius none of that um, yeah and I can't remember anything about it and that breaks my heart but that is that is my experience yeah. with it it's good stuff yeah I got into fully into astrology I would say in the past like four years or so 
Um, I feel like there are so many levels to getting into astrology. Like most people probably know their sun sign. At this point, a lot of people tend to know what a big three is, which if you don't, that is your sun, moon, and rising sign. But I, I would say I'm like 10 steps in. Like I tend to know what the like elements of each signs are, what their energies are, their acts, their aspects, exaltations, and like not just the planets in your chart. But people know even more than that, which blows my brain. <laughs> it makes okay, cool. it's crazy. It's a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, so I, 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 sorry to keep talking and not letting Derek speak, but I, I have thoughts and questions, <laughs> and I have fu- brought the fucking energy. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> you eccentric um, Aquarius, you. <laughs> Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> I, I have feelings about Aquarius, which is it should be a water sign and it's not. And it just, it bothers me a little. It anyways, bothers most people. I, it's just, an, it's just annoying. It's just an Scorpio annoying. Scorpio sounds like it should be a fire sign, but it's a water sign. Yeah. yeah there's, a, yep. there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of that. Anyways. Okay. But the thing I, I do want to bring up is that there's a lot of like negative, I would say, feelings about um uh, about astrology and Mm -hmm. the signs and all of that right like from like kind of douchey dudes on dating apps who are like whatever signs don't matter and like Mm -hmm. i mean kind of kind of no but also it's a fun thing and it matters to some people so like back off Mm -hmm. like there's those people and then there's me who kind of lost it at my uh co-workers about a year and a half almost two years ago when, oh, no. uh, well, okay. So the, the, it was, it was middle of the pandemic. Um, and I worked at a library and normally we have work studies. And if you're a work study, you can't take, get a job. Like you can't get an outside job at the university yeah. I worked with. Um, and that's a big problem because it's bolder. Things are expensive. You have to have the job to like live. And so, Ooh. sorry, my dog is in here with me right now. Um, that's okay. Be... Hi girl. Yeah. Um, Anyways, what ended up happening though was my my coworkers were literally putting off whether or not we were going to tell people or decide if we were going to hire people or not because, mm-hmm. and I quote, the stars were not in alignment for making decisions that week. Oh, I love. have to let my dog out now. Um, okay, <laughs> he is not happy. One second. I mean, I feel like we've all had an experience like that. I've definitely, I mean, living in LA. You have a lot of people that blame things on Mercury being in retrograde. Um, there we go. Sorry. But, <laughs> no, you're good. I was just talking about how like a lot of people blame things on Metro or on Mercury being in retrograde, but yeah, my roommate pointed out that Mercury is almost is at least where from we are. It's almost always in like metrograde or retrograde. I can't even metrograde. Speak. <laughs> metrograde. <laughs> Mercury's on the subway. Um. Anyway. Uh, Mercury's in Gatorade. Oh dear. Powerade, Gatorade, Lemonade, all the AIDS. <laughs> Mercury is in a Beyonce album. <laughs> there it is, Which, folks. By the way, we got there. <laughs> Thank you, Derek. Do you guys know what retrograde actually is, out of curiosity? No. I'm I from what I understand, it's when the it's when Mercury looks like it's going backwards. Hey, fuck yeah. See, okay. I, that's me clapping I, for you. I, I, to me, it always sounded like Mercury was actually going backwards, and I did not understand. Yeah. Like, so, what like it as is, a child, it's, it's... I was like, "Can the planets turn around? Like, why do they do that?" <laughs> no so wonder that's bad. <laughs> yeah. It, so every planet can do it. Mercury just tends to do it a lot. So that's why we talk about that one a lot. But it's it's when it reaches a slower point in its rotation relative to the earth so it literally looks like it's slowing down so in astrology terms like it it makes everything jumbled up it the effects of the planet that it usually has are like not acting as they should be but the thing is if you were born during a retrograde like if mercury was in retrograde when you were born you probably feel more normal when it's in retrograde by astrology standards so mm-hmm. it's all, it's all kind of, you know, how deep you want to go into it. Yeah. Fair. Okay. So here's, so here's my question that was, uh, uh, oh yes, uh, tied to me being like, you know, sometimes people are weird about this, you know, like, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> my question is like, as someone who, um, 
cares about this and Mm -hmm. who it makes difference to and 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 has positive effects for me it's a pleasant diversion that is like feels a little bit like magic in the real world and so that's very Mm -hmm. fun but that is that is as like that is about (laughs) as far as it goes for me right um Mm -hmm. and i get frustrated when people will like my coworkers did because they were like literally not giving people information that they needed to make like life decisions because like that was that was very frustrating for me though i will say that if like somebody was like doing that same thing and saying to me like literally like well it's ash wednesday i'd be like no we're having this meeting like these kids need to know what is what's happening so that they Mm -hmm. know if they can come to the university or not like it's the same thing where it's like yeah i'm not i don't want to i want don't want to step anyone's beliefs but at the same time there is also some other things going on, you know? So I want to hear that. I want to hear the pro pitch, right? Because I think a lot of people just hear the, hear the either the negative pitch or have like Mm -hmm. the feeling of like, oh, it's fun. And that's the end of it, you know? Yeah. Or again, like you're saying, it's kind of like exclusionary for some reason. Mm -hmm, It's mm -hmm, like, why mm -hmm. do we need to do that? So I have kind of two ways that I look at it. I have like a spiritual woo-woo way that I look at it. And I have a human way that I look at it. So on the spiritual side, I, you know, matter can neither be created nor destroyed. We're all embodiments of energy, yada, yada. So who is to say that we as teeny tiny little beings who happen to have consciousness can't be affected by things as gargantuan as like celestial bodies in our solar system? Like who is Mm -hmm. to really say with all that? So that kind of mysticism and stuff like that, that it, it helps me, I don't know, with a lot of mindfulness and appreciation it brings a lot of gratitude into it but on the human side humans are just silly little meaning making machines and i just love learning the ways that we make meaning and Mm -hmm. astrology is one of the most multicultural and like ancient ways to like learn about humanity and i think that's super cool we do like the stars we yeah. love them stars. We see things in the stars. We tell stories with the stars. It's, yeah, it's super magical. I love how the number 12 is, like, super multicultural, too. Like, there's 12 signs, 12 houses. Like, it's that's from that the, more wait, anthropological that's standpoint. That's the interesting thing about the Japanese one. It had 13. Does it? Yeah, because it's it's based like off of, the, like... a hidden house or something? Uh, yeah, it's the cat. So, like, yeah. in the, in the uh, like, if you look at, like, the Chinese zodiac, right? Like... Mm -hmm. There's no cat. There's a tiger, but there's no cat. And there's a whole story about it in which the cat is um, uh, tricked out of the Zodiac by the the mouse or the rat Mm -hmm. in in Chinese, um, I believe. And but in Japan, um, at least the one my my grandmother used, uh, the cat remained in. um, And what, what happened is the mouse tricked the cat out and then like. The heavens were like, oh, that was a great trick. Mouse, you're in. Cat, it's okay. You're still in too, basically. Aww. Um, That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like, it's a, it's a 13-based one, which I found interesting. Um, but, again, uh, Shintoism is kind of uh, akin to, like, um, sort of, like, Hindu beliefs in terms of, like, there's a thousand different versions of everything, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, was she Shinto? She was. Uh, she was Shinto so cool. and and Zen Buddhist. Like, um, I think she was raised Shinto and then became Zen Buddhist. Um, so uh, cool. Like, I think that her family was pretty traditional, and then yeah. uh, mm-hmm. she adapted to more modern uh, spiritual sensibilities, I suppose. So so cool. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, so Taylor, you have done Derek and I a favor. <laughs> Heck yeah, content baby content. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I said, so I'm I'm here looking at a at a 21 page condensed file. I have the big one too that I can share with you guys later. Oh um, my. Oh wow. <laughs> but I I went through a couple of things. Um I don't like just looking at astrology in terms of like you are this and that's the end. I like looking at like compatibility and what our placements actually have to teach us Mm -hmm. so i'm going to be going into more of that i wondered if you guys wanted first to know your compatibility with each other 
Oh. Yes. Well, can yeah, you give us our good. can you give us our big three so we have like a, a oh, grounding yeah, yeah. point and then we can oh, go yeah. into go into further depth of like compatibility and like those sorts of things. So and then the, yes, I want to know how compatible Derek and I are. This is this. It, is it was really fun to look up. <laughs> it was really fun. <laughs> so Dane, you're a big three. You are a Aquarius Sun. You are a Cancer Moon, and you are a Scorpio Rising. And That's... your archetypes are the Maverick, the Nurturer, and the Alchemist. Hmm. Mm. Neat. And that's air. <laughs> that's air, water, water, right? Yep. Cool. Okay. Oh. Okay. Dude, you you are the airiest little water boy. You are. That is like all you are <laughs> on your whole chart. <laughs> that's it's like all of it. And then Derek, you are a Scorpio Sun, Virgo Moon, and Gemini Rising. Hmm. You are pretty even with all the elements across your chart, but you're mostly water. Okay. Which is fun. And you are the alchemist, the healer, and the messenger. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> it was, and I have to say, I made a a full thing, too, because when I was looking into your guys' houses and things like that, too, it the me knowing you, too, the way that I do, it got a little too real. So I omitted a bunch of stuff. <laughs> that was a little too real, but you can read about it later. Oh, okay. 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 So how compatible <laughs> are Derek and I? Okay. So your least compatible aspect is your guys' sons. Your like outward energies and personalities are on paper the least compatible, which I found yeah. very funny. <laughs> yeah, that tracks though. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm bringing the energy today, but like that is not... <laughs> That is not usually the vibe. No, usually no. I'm the one doing handstands in the parking lot, and Danes are like, "Why? <laughs> Please calm down." But what's nice is your most compatible aspect is your second most like inner aspect of your chart, your moon. So you guys relate the most on your like heart, emotional, like inner monologue level. Oh, cool. That makes sense. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys have a really nice way of relating to each other. Mm. But yeah, high the five. next <laughs> high five, bro. <laughs> yeah, the next two aspects far... that you're like not very compatible with is the way that you show love and the way that you view like optimism. You guys see things very differently in those regards. <laughs> that makes sense. How so? <laughs> so in terms of Venus... Let's see. Did I put this in order of who is who? I might not have. One of you has a Sagittarius Venus. One of you has a Pisces Venus. Sagittarius well, and Pisces don't get along. <laughs> if we're going with air and water boy, I, I'm probably the Pisces that I would guess. Yeah, I think you have the <laughs> the watery Pisces moon and Derek, you have the fiery Sagittarius moon hey. or Venus. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. as far as Jupiter goes, um, which also has to do with luck. Derek, again, you're Sagittarius. Dane, you're Capricorn. And Capricorn is the, like, archetype of a very stern Earth man. <laughs> <laughs> so Derek is this flitty little Sagittarius adventure boy when it comes to, like, optimism. And you're, like, a very practical Earth man with it. I'm having flashbacks to Derek being like, I we're 17. You're like, I think we can do a dragon next season. I'm like, Derek, we can't. <laughs> we yeah. can't. I'm sorry. Literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But on the plus side, the next way that you are most compatible is how you guys handle hardship, your fighting spirit, your conflict, your passion. That's your Mars. Sagittarius and Aquarius are besties. So interesting. You guys get along really, really well in that respect, as well as your guys' approach to discipline, responsibility, ambition. That is Saturn. And you both have a Pisces Saturn. Oh, oh. So That's you guys the are fish, very, right? very relatable. That is the fish, the twin this fish. Is the fish. Okay, good. I'm, I'm, I'm checking in. So, I, okay, <laughs> question. Okay, uh, just a yes. slight aside. Anybody here watch the anime fairy tale? I used to. Fen used to love that too. I've seen one episode, and it was the pilot. <laughs> Fair enough. Anyways, <laughs> um, uh, Gracie's like her. It's, it's her starter anime. You know, like it's the one that's ah. like that. Um, uh. 
and you know i i was kind of a fan for a while um so a lot of my connection to understanding visually what the fucking um uh zodiac signs are is there's a character lucy yeah. has, the, has the keys that like bring forth the zodiac signs to fight for her and i fully um, forgot about that yeah some of them are very silly sagittarius is a man in a horse costume with a bow for example i'm not sure even joking is. i'm not even joking <laughs> um so yeah and i think pisces came really late in the series so i don't have a good mm. visual for that so i keep forgetting what it is um it's a fish <laughs> it's fish okay it's fish. i my side is over continue please <laughs> But yeah, your guys' overall compatibility, it averages out to a 56%. <laughs> but you guys are either hella compatible in aspects of your life or very not compatible in other aspects of your life. <laughs> right. So it sounds like, Derek, you and I should like continue what we're doing and not date. That sounds that sounds right yeah, to me. <laughs> not date. Yeah. Potentially not live together. <laughs> potentially yeah. not live together. I think you guys could run a decent household together, but I think your order of operations would keep getting in the way. Yeah. I think we would need a th- another person to balance mm. something. You know. To offset a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I For think sure. that makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, you guys, as far as compatibility goes, you're also super connected on more of your like outer aspects of your zodiac chart. So your inner aspects are planets, sun through Mars, and then anything Jupiter and outward is your outer aspects. What's and the difference share... between an... what's the difference what? between an outer and inner aspect? What is So your inner aspects are more close to like your own heart. It's gonna reflect more of who you actually are and like the energy that you bring out into the world. Hmm. And then your outer aspects are typically a little bit more generational. Like you'll relate to your peers when we're on these aspects. Okay. If that makes sense. Cause a lot of those planets tend to move a little bit more slowly. So like Derek, for instance, you and I have almost all the same outer planets because we were born super close together. Oh, right. Cause we're both 95. Mm-hmm. And I, Dane, I thought that you would still have the same ones too, but you guys have only three outer planets that are the same. Huh. Hmm. Which wow. I found interesting. Because you're you're February, Dane. So that that four months or three months, I guess. Three it's the three change. months and a whole and a whole year. Ninety six. <laughs> well, it changes yeah. everything. <laughs> Apparently, because like I said, Derek, you and I are only like tech. Uh, no, I guess we're a solid four months apart, but you guys are closer, so. Yeah, yeah, because like, you and I are like almost exactly four months, and mm-hmm. then Dane and I are a little under four months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. That really does, that, that year change really does make I, a difference. Yeah. I don't know what happened. <laughs> All right, Taylor, you, you, we, we've talked about Derek and I. You got to give us some of yours, though. I know you guys <gasps> oh didn't necessarily God. do compatibility and everything necessarily, but I, I, I'm now curious. Well, here, let let me pull up my co-star real quick cuz I like the way hey. that they I like the way they format. Yeah. Their... It's very digestible. And to be clear mm-hmm. everyone listening, we are not this episode is not sponsored by CoStar. Uh, dude, <laughs> if only they got so much money. <laughs> that would be very that would be very wild, but no, it is not. Um, <laughs> it is a very convenient app though. I downloaded it when I first moved to LA because mm. I was on a, I was working on a set for free. And the producer said, I would never hire a Scorpio. And I would fire whoever is a Scorpio on this set right now. And they looked at me and said, what star sign are you? And I was like, I'm a Scorpio. And they were like, okay, you're going to download CoStar right now. And we're going to determine if you're one of the good ones. <laughs> oh, wow. my God. See, again, that kind of like toxic behavior. Because frankly, I love Scorpios. Like, you and Reese are two of my best friends, both Scorpio men who get the most shit as far as, like, Zodiacs go. What's oh. wrong with Scorpio? What did Scorpio do? I know it's a scorpion, but, like... <laughs> so, Scorpio Scorpios are very about, like, mystery. So, they okay. can come off as, like, shady or elusive or, like, they're always hiding something. Scorpio men have, like, a really big stereotype that they cheat because of that, but... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. It's, it's not truly founded. Yeah. I remember like what this producer had determined was because I was a November Scorpio and closer to Sagittarius, I was mm-hmm. okay. 
Oh, um, oh yeah. Gracie once said something to me where she was like, uh, <laughs> she was like, you're good Aquarius because you're a February one. The January ones are rude. And I was like, I, I'm I'm not a January one by two hours. Two yeah. hours. Yeah, dead ass. <laughs> <laughs> and not to mention, my sweet baby Nicholas is a January Aquarius. Would either of you describe him as rude? No, he is the nicest boy. <laughs> no, no, he's, he's an extremely polite boy. Yeah. And it's funny because we're describing him as if he's like a really nice dog. But yes, no, he's a good he, boy. He is a good boy <laughs> with an eye. <laughs> Nicholas, you are a distinguished man and yeah. we appreciate you. A distinguished, he is a, a distinguished, distinguished man. Yes, yeah, for your yeah, service, we're going to go the other extreme. We're going to we're going to be gentlemen. Yes. Mr. Greenlee, you are a distinguished gentleman. And we also get, the goodest boy. And also the goodest boy. A distinguished gentleman both? and a goodish boy. Oh, that's that sounds like a great title for like a gentleman and a scholar, but instead of that, it's a distinguished <laughs> gentleman and a good boy. <laughs> oh my god. I'm imagining uh, a dog in a tweed jacket. Um Yeah. That's Nicholas's essence, like truly. So <sighs> It sounds like we need to get Nick on the podcast to defend this claim. But yeah, it's not. Oh, he would. He, he would I'm, if he I'm wasn't so sleeping bored. right now. <laughs> oh. Nicholas! <laughs> it's early. <laughs> okay, so Scorpios get a bad rap. I mean, Aquarius I guess all can of also them... sometimes get a bad rap because y'all are stereotyped as like the weird hippie. Oh, rude i see that would i mean like <laughs> if this was dane in high school before he started wearing shoes and oh button down shirts and then stuff yeah, I, then yes i could see that stereotype being really just punched home all right gotta okay gotta come clean by my by the standards i now run in absolutely still the hippie boy like oh, yeah. I'm so you do yoga. I, yeah, oh, no, I dang. do yoga in and, Boulder. In Boulder, yeah. and by the law school standards, like oh boy, um, <laughs> God, I cannot. I okay, I, we got to digress for a second here. Um, I'm going to start by saying my classmates are great. I they're, uh-huh. they're they're brilliant. I am also not alone in on the hippie side, um, mm-hmm. but like. It, it uh, having like mostly run my life in like artist circles, yeah. I'm, I'm occasionally thrown by the amount of like clean cutness and just like, what do you like to do for fun? I watch the game and I go to law school and I'm like, y- you're so, you're very boring, sir. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah, no. It's so I, I I I might wear shoes, but um but your feet never forgot. No, they, nope. they the don't soil forget. beneath it. Yeah. It's <laughs> <sighs> so good. <laughs> Law school is a relatively speaking conservative place is what I'm saying and I am not. For sure. A- Aquarius crim- is one of the most progressive signs. So I believe it. My crim law professor has me like fucking pegged right now. Um, How so? Like he, oh, he's like figured out that like I believe in restorative justice and I'm like not yeah. super about like criminalization and all of these things. And so he'll just like call on me whenever he feels like he wants someone to be on one particular side of an argument because he knows. Oh, dear God. He knows where I stand. So I like. Yeah. He's great, though. Like, honestly, really great. I'm just like, fucking, like, okay, like, you get cold called in law school, right? And uh-huh. so, like, I, I, I've i been keeping track. There are people who haven't been called yet, and I've been called on, like, three times this semester specifically without having, <laughs> like, a- asked for it. And so I'm like, there's, like, 80 people in our class, too. Anyways, oh, we gotta get back to the stars. We gotta get back to the stars. <laughs> Read at the stars. I've never seen The Grey Showman. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Music's oh, real wait. good. Oh yeah, Music's real good. It is. It is absolute fire. Yeah. I was asked to pull up my my big three. Yes. 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 So, I am a Leo sun. That makes sense. I am a Leo moon. That makes sense. <laughs> and I'm a Virgo rising. Oh. Um... It feels like a lot of fire. Is that right? So that many a... much fire. So many much I... fires. 
I call myself a mega Leo because I have a sun, moon, and Mercury that are all Leo. So I am just very Leo energy. And then the house that all those placements sit in is also the one that Leo happens to be for my chart. So mm. I I am just big Leo energy. Okay, wait. What is the house? I don't know what the house is. I okay. I'm <gasps> okay. Hang on. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I was well aware of like the whole like the celestial bodies, like sun out oh, to sir. sun out to Pluto. I I knew that. I knew that. Oh, sir. I and I knew that they all had relations, and I knew they had elements. What is the house? It's oh, sick, sir. <laughs> It's oh, a dear. content influencer house where they make TikToks. Ugh, no, ew, get it away. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Continue to know it. We're too old for that shit. <laughs> what are we too old for? The ancient influencer TikTok houses. influencer house oh, that is God. the star signs all living together. That's a sick Oh, oh wow. Oh, dear. Okay. Um, That's an animated series. I would watch yes. that. Okay, okay. <laughs> what is the house? Yeah, what, yeah so, what, what are the houses? You may remember... I asked you both for your exact birth times and your exact birth cities. Yes. Ah. That was to determine your rising sign, which is the constellation that was rising over the eastern horizon the moment you were born. And that determines your houses. So the the 3D circular map of the heavens the moment you were born will be split into 12 houses and your rising sign is your first house. And then it goes on from there. So every houses themselves always mean the same thing, but the energy that's in them will be different depending on your rising sign. So I have a Virgo rising. That means my first house, which is the house of like the self, the body, people's perception of me, my presentation, very Virgo. So if I had any other planets placed in that house, it would embody that energy too. Okay. Uh, okay. So it's like, um, um, no, I don't get it. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'll give you guys some examples. So Dane. Okay. <laughs> your son. Yes. Is an Aquarius. Yeah. It is in your third house which happens to be Capricorn. So you have a little bit of strife going on there because Aquarius and Capricorn are intrinsically opposite. Oh, good. But your third house, (laughs) and on top of that, uh, Aquarius is in detriment when it's a sun sign, meaning you have a different or unconventional expression of your outward energy, which is pretty fun. (laughs) But when it's in your third house, you're a person that seeks knowledge in every aspect of their life and wants to be knowledgeable about their surroundings and you tend to be very ambitious because the energy of the sun is all outward energy expression it's your ego okay so the way that you're focused in with your sun in your third house that's what that determines basically it's how the outward energy represented by the sun is represented Okay. 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 So let me, let me see if, so the houses are like lenses at each of the celestial Mm -hmm. bodies is like a light. So you put the lens over the light and it changes. Absolutely. That's a perfect metaphor. Great. Okay. I've got it now. Thank you. All right. Um, that whole knowledge thing also rude. I'm feeling extremely (laughs) called out. I will say every time (laughs) that the whole, like, I know that we're all like, like you said, we're all like little like meaning making machines. Like we totally are. Like we totally, totally are. Um, but sometimes with Zodiac in particular, it just, it just, I get very called out. Like I get very called out. If you're Uh-oh. doing it right, you're supposed to. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> keep going. What's the, so what, so is the first house the most important house? Uh, yes and no. It's, it's your most on your mind house. Like it's your own personality. Mm. It's your own body. It's your own behavior. Like it doesn't really have to do with anything besides yourself. Okay, so what are Derek and I's first houses? So Derek, let's see. Dane, your very first house is your rising, which is Scorpio. Okay. So you have a lot you have a lot of Scorpio energy. So <laughs> if you'd like me to read it. <laughs> I'm giggling because it's, <laughs> it's go, go good. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. <laughs> At times you can seem forceful or demanding because you know so firmly what you want. <laughs> you're, mm. you're, you value the power and strength of silence calm and collection are both very important to you and you are both an excellent speaker and listener 
So what your Scorpio rising is meant to teach you is that you have a very strong desire to change the world for the better. So your approach is very dependable. You're very willful in your pursuits of life. You seek companions that are strong personalities like yourself. Hmm. So if you're ever feeling any like headbutting against how like people present to you, it's probably because you're seeing something of yourself in them. Hmm. Uh, All right. All right. right? (laughs) That tracks. And then Derek, since Gemini is your first house, that's your rising, you are restless and expressive. You can exude importance, even if it's not intentional, just by nature. (laughs) This made me laugh. You flip between bubbly, talkative, and quirky to rather cool and intellectual in demeanor, but you are always witty and clever. Aww. Strongly agree with that. Yeah, that is big, very big, much big agree. Big agree. <laughs> <laughs> you tend to gravitate towards people who also have robust pr- personalities, so you guys align a lot in that way. Scorpio and Gemini mm. are pretty similar in a lot of aspects because Gemini is all about... Um, people call it two-faced. That's another zodiac sign that gets a lot of shit but it's really yeah. because you're able to see every side of everything like you have an in, an innate dualism to you uh, okay which signs get good raps because i'm not i'm struggling to think of one right now <laughs> like <laughs> well it depends what you want because <laughs> people tend to like cancers as friends but they shit on cancers because they're crying all the time <laughs> people would say like leo for instance like i'm somebody that they would want as a friend but probably not a romantic partner because i'm too much Uh, (laughs) okay yeah so like every single one of them seems to get a bad rap so like yes uh, like scorpios are like secretive and cheaters and Mm -hmm. and and leo's too much and gemini is like two-faced and aquarius is like aloof and arrogant i think or rude or something and and weird I, and weird and <laughs> like weird. Taurus is is <laughs> wait is Taurus one no yeah Taurus Taurus is like Taurus lazy. is bullheaded and like late yeah um I, I Aries mate I don't know but Aries is... people call Aries the baby or the baby wow. zodiac they fight a lot okay wow what about people Libra just... I've I've never heard anything <laughs> bad about Libra oh people do not like Libra what yeah. the fuck. <laughs> Okay, you see, yeah. nobody can win. <laughs> nope. Yeah, nobody can win. Nope. It, it's either you want them as a friend or you want them as a partner. And there's like no in between. Uh, or you hate you them? to change that. <laughs> we do. This is why we talk about it because there's good sides to everybody. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm just like, what? The... <laughs> this is rude. Like, you could just like go around like that guy who's like, fuck Scorpios. I'd be like, fuck whatever you are because you're something, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if you exist, you're something. If you exist, yeah, you're something. You're literally something. stars didn't die the second you were born and then blink back into existence. And if they did, I think I'd have bigger problems with you. I'd be more concerned, honestly. I'd blame you. I think you might be some sort of demon if that were the case. Oh, so that, maybe like leave Scorpios plot. alone. I that guess is, is a what great I'm plot. Saying. That it's 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 like a like it's like the protagonist was born on a starless night. Yo. <laughs> Therefore, they have no sign. They're unpredictable. S- spooky. Spooky. <laughs> it's because they're a star eater. <gasps> oh no, they're the prophesied star eater. Yeah, prophesied star eater. Uh, or if everybody has wow, powers, just... if everybody in that had powers based off their zodiac sign, maybe that person could like borrow other people's because they're like, oh. yo, they're like, yeah, th- and and okay, yeah, that's cool. They gotta that's collect cool. all twelve. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> become the avatar. <laughs> yeah, sorry, keep going. I got I got sidetracked. <laughs> we broke two shows on the podcast today. We are ripping. <laughs> Somebody get on a copyright website after this. <laughs> No one steal our ideas or else we will know because we have recorded evidence that this existed before you, know what's you stole it from us. Actually, I kind of learned that copyrights, you don't have to like, um, you don't have to like get them. You just, they, they're, they, they apply automatically. Like if you write a book, it's co- like, you, you just have that. Oh, so when yeah. someone, so as long puts... as you author yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Damn. Um, okay. Yeah, it's super interesting. Like certain ones, like like a trademark or whatnot, those have to be mm-hmm. like you have to go get it. Um, but or and like a patent, you have to go get it. Yeah. But um, like if you paint a painting, that's your painting, and that's that's it. And then like there's a point at which it stops, like in theory, unless you're fucking Disney. But like, anyways, <laughs> rage. But yeah, no, it just it just happens. So it's it's interesting. I think you. I don't know all the ins and outs of it. Again, I'm not a lawyer. This is an actual legal advice, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I just learned a fun fact in property class. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's dangerous. It's dangerous. I have all these like, I hesitate to call them fun facts because sometimes they're really not fun. But um, I have all these fun facts now, but they also could accidentally be misconstrued as legal advice now. So I have to like right. qualify my fun facts that I learned in school. Wait, <laughs> Dane, we could. Yeah, we, what's up? You could call it <laughs> dangerous facts. <laughs> did it, did, did it, did. That's very dangerous. That's a dangerous idea, Dane. This is why some of, we're not we're only fifty six percent compatible, Derek. <laughs> we're gonna I'm gonna make that a segment. Every week I'm gonna be like, so Dane, what's your dangerous fact this week? <laughs> no. It's okay, I'll have tailored facts. Hey uh-huh. And I will keep them direct. <laughs> direct. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> I'm on fire this morning. (laughs) I'm on literal fire this morning. Your energy's growing. It's growing. It's growing. It's getting there. This is why the three of us should be in a room. Yeah, it is. My body's waking up. I've had almost 14 ounces of water. (laughs) Yay! (laughs) Water's good. Water's good, you water sign you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Hydrate for those at home right now. Yeah. Hydrate so, or dihydrate. Okay, so Taylor, how deep does this all go? So there's, okay, so there's so the planets deep. and there's the planets and all that, and then there's the um, there's the inner and outer, which I didn't know about, but makes a lot mm-hmm. of sense. You know, like there's the inner rocky planets and there are the outer gaseous planets, and then there's yep. Pluto and things. Anyways, um, and there's also the comet Chiron, and there's also an aspect called Dark Moon Lilith, which is not a place but okay. like an energy. Hang on one second. There's the houses, and then there's what? Go back to, like, we'll get back to Dark Moon <laughs> Lilith, because that sounds like a Dark Souls boss, and we'll come back to it. But It might be. Who knows? <laughs> I, dark Moon Gwendolyn, it, or no, is it Dark Sun? Dark Moon Gwendolyn is, is definitely an actual boss. Lilith is just like a... Anyways, keep going. Sorry. What are the two... <laughs> So the ones that I went into in my condensed version were also your north node, which is also important to know based on your birth time. Uh-huh. And it what therefore a... has a south node. Okay, what is a north and south node? What What is So that? those are nodes of the moon. So your north node refers to where it was transiting or pointing relative to your birth. And that changes every like year and a half or so. Huh. And your south node is just the bottom of that. So the point of the moon that was pointing away. So your north node is like your karmic path for this life. And your south node was your karmic path in either your most immediate past life or the most occurring one in your past lives. Okay. And that has a sign too. And you guys both actually have the same north node. Oh, okay. And therefore south node. So your north node is, let me look it up. You guys are both Libra, which is like the balancing sign. You guys are always seeking feedback and letting that improve things in your life. You're focused mostly on personal survival a lot of the time, which may lead to sensory sensory overload or self-justification that stunts your growth. Hmm. So that Mm. is the energy that has come into this life for both of you. So you're like the energy that you need to harness to fulfill your soul mission like the reason that you're here is working on your tact, your cooperation and your inner balance, like gaining perspective is super imperative to making good life decisions. And it's also a way to avoid unnecessary conflict. So always like hearing other people out, always reading, always, you know, ingesting other perspectives. Okay. That's rude to Derek and I both. That's you're welcome. Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I amount, fucking told the you, dude. The amount of information that collectively I know Derek and I take in on like yeah a, a daily to weekly basis is probably a little on the ridiculous side. Um, yeah, yeah, you're you're both super drawn to it because you both know that it's a big part of like like intrinsically you know it's like a really big part of your life is what type of uh, element is libra again is that an air i feel like that's an air libra is air Mm -hmm. gotcha okay air boys (laughs) very airy very logic oriented very intellect oriented very idea oriented Mm. Mm. okay in the south node i do (laughs) let's see (laughs) let me look up my condensed one because i didn't know if you would want to know about it yeah let's see your condensed one is oh god uh, in my my big one it's like almost 40 pages wow i went ham yeah dope Ab- because i love it it's just so fun like i love like that's that's my virgo in me i love making lists <laughs> and i love like developing things it's so fun so okay. you guys' south node is in Aries, which is the baby air sign or the baby fire sign. So what you guys are bringing in from previous lives is the feeling of heroism and also the expectation that you could lose. Dang. Dang. That's, that's so real and brutal, but also that makes so much sense. Yeah. It's, it's a lot again, knowing you both the way that I do. It's a lot. (laughs) Dang, uh, that's heavy. <laughs> you do not have to be prepared at all times to lose your friendships, your jobs, or your joy, you guys. You tend to live on an island. Don't overfortify and don't settle for being lonely. Dang. Wow. Move on? Dane, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> we move on. <laughs> Dude, bro, wait. Wait, but look at the positive side, right? We we were heroic in a pe- in a previous life, but we yep. were probably heroic. Or several lives. And se- yeah, several lives. Yeah, we were probably heroic, and we probably lost a few times. Um, It'd be like that. Someone once told me that they were like, "You were probably a soldier in a past life several times because the way you describe things and remember things is very from a very like particular like like tactical logical point of view mm-hmm. and i was like oh that's a strange observation but i mean hey if general Patton thought he had already been to you know egypt because he was he believed mm. he was an ancient roman general then right. sure i guess that has some water <laughs> <laughs> so good <laughs> it's, the, it's, it's the thing of like the fear of losing i'm just like mm-hmm. yeah so here's how you pick yourself up where your soul left off you too You allow yourself to have the things that you want and allow yourself to go without under the, or stop going without under the guise of protecting yourselves. Mm. 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 Yeah. What's this whole dark moon Lilith thing? (laughs) (laughs) You just want a boss fight. I am uncomfortable. (laughs) You want a boss fight that you know you could win. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I, 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 I didn't. I can take this information. I'll think about it. It's going to bug me for a really long time. But like right I said, now, I'll share the document with you. <laughs> yeah, please do. Please do. But I would like to talk about Dark Moon Lilith because um, I frequently think that Lilith got a bad rap. As a I agree. I love her. Friend. Her and Jezebel. Her and Jezebel both. Yeah. They're both used as like derogatory terms. It's like, I don't get it. Maybe just that's gonna, because just they don't subscribe it. to that shit. Say it. The Judeo Christian religions are a little. A ch- I, I think they might just be a little bit patriarchal. Just saying, just saying. It's just a thought. I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know if there's much literature to back that up or lived yeah. experience of <laughs> much, of, of much female uh, people. I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I it's it's just a theory I have. I, I need to ask around about it. It's an inkling, perhaps. It's a thought. It's a thought. Yeah, yeah. It's a thought that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good. Anyways, sorry. <laughs> I'm really argumentative today. I think I've shit on most religion today. So, um, <laughs> with the exception Sorry. of like, with the well, with the exception of Shintoism and Buddhism, yeah, you were kind. Yeah, but I think that's an easy religion to be kind to. Then again, <laughs> well, yoga okay, and you're actually, a hippie. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> kidding. Um, both of those things are horrifically patriarchal. Like Buddhism. Yes, they are. A, certainly, has they a are. lot of problems. Just, yes, unfortunately, oh, Buddhism has a real problem with. Um, 
sexism in general um Mm -hmm. and shintoism is is old in that way that like all of the old like japan has horrible gender relations so let's it do yeah let's i like i just because i have fond memories of my my step grandmother let's not say (laughs) that those get (laughs) off the hook um Uh, y'all ain't scot-free no hell no um hell no See, this is why I like looking into this spiritual woo-woo-ness, because you can assign your own meaning and not hurt other people. Mm. You can. Hooray. You absolutely mm. can. Okay, keep going. Dark Moon Lilith. Sorry, I got us so- off by shitting on Christianity. I'm sorry. <laughs> you need to, like, tattoo that on your body. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I got us off topic because I was shitting on Christianity. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. That's a bumper sticker. <laughs> oh, at least. <laughs> So Black Moon Lilith isn't actually a a thing that exists, but it is a a spot along the orbit of the moon when it's furthest away from the Earth. So that so area where the moon gets really far away, that's Black Moon Lilith. Okay. And it's usually in each constellation for around nine months. So some of your peers might have the same Lilith as you, some of them may not. And it deals with like hidden emotions, femininity, desire, and just overall karmic energy, like the karmic energy that you're acting on while you're alive. Uh. Okay. So you guys have the same Lilith. You're both Cancer. Oh, so that explains a lot. <laughs> you both have a lot of shame for feeling needy or dependent and can feel awkward or angry when people display those traits like without apology if they're just needy independent outright you're like Ugh. oh dang <laughs> wow calling me out i'm done with dark moon lilith now <laughs> <laughs> this was not a good battle the outer planets. these are the ones I that did. call no, you keep out going. the most <laughs> keep going <laughs> so <laughs> how you deal with shame and seek slash handle empowerment is by allowing yourself to be cared for nurtured and pampered on occasion Mm. You, you just you gotta let it happen sometimes and i haven't been touching on um these things in your different houses so i'll do that with this one um you guys have them in different houses but because of both your risings they're both in your gemini house whoa so you bring yeah you guys have a lot of synchronicities like that it's pretty cool um dane it's your eighth house so as far as your full energy of lilith goes you can be suspicious of other people's intentions and you need to understand situations in depth before you make moves and you can become obsessed with unearthing secrets. <laughs> oh, that's, that's Dane. <laughs> What's no, Again, that like two-sided enemy. <laughs> Derek, your Lilith is in your first house. So the same as your rising, which is Gemini. Huh. Um, so it's super intrinsic to your per- identity and your personality at your core. You're overall a very, proud strong authentic and powerful person but you're very self-conscious about being perceived as vain for these things Mm. which that makes sense very much you (laughs) yeah Mm. huh well dane we've beaten dark moon lilith have (laughs) we maybe we've lost (laughs) have we (laughs) i'm still i'm still like my mind is still blown that in a past life we both were were uh you know heroic like in embody- some way yeah her- heroic in some way and uh, and have lost and we're afraid of it like that <laughs> that is like that is some real shit. Oh. Real shit okay all right so okay so now i'm 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 i'm, I'm gonna circle this back all right okay. so we have we have sun through planets right we have that we have yep. inner and outer we have yep. how many houses is it total 12 12 okay right 12 yeah okay we have 12 houses we have a rising sign we have a dark moon um what a north and south node north and south node what else is there like because because for most people i think the some people go all the way to the big three but and then stop yeah but i think most people stop at sun like they just the one that is associated with the, the date of like you know um because that's where i most of the time have stopped in my life um Mm -hmm. it's the most known one it's also the one that was practiced in the states for the longest like astrology wasn't really 
like in in the whole mind of the country very popular until mm-hmm. like after the 70s like people would like read their like horoscope for fun but like actually learning what astrology meant wasn't really popular until much later huh, yeah so after no. the, the summer of 69 yeah, basically, mm-hmm. which <laughs> pretty much <laughs> both of my grandmothers. Yeah, it all tracks. Like, yeah, the, the age, the age. Yeah, no, it's all, it's all, it's all, it all makes sense. So my yeah. question is, what else is there? Because you, you, oh, you keep so referencing this forty-page document. Um, we don't need to I go know. into all of them because I do know that we are, we are starting to, we are starting to come up towards time. But I, I'm curious, like, what else is there? Um, okay, so I can kind of run through it. Um, So as far as your houses go, there are four houses that are never um, truly empty, meaning like I could look at my chart and be like, oh, I don't have anything in my third house, but I might. As far as that goes, your first house always has your rising. Your fourth house always has what's called your midheaven. And then on the opposite ends of both of those, you also have a descendant. So the rising is sometimes called the ascendant. You have a descendant in your seventh house and you have a, I don't think there's a non-Latin word for it. It's called the imum coeli for the opposite of your midheaven. So those houses in your chart always have something in them. Okay. And that's another aspect that people will look into. Something I like looking into too is how the planet's energy affects your um, different zodiac. So for instance, I'm a Leo sun and the sun is exalted when it's in Leo, meaning it's elevated and effortless and like super high functioning. Uh, There's also okay, so like that's domicile, like, detriment, and fall. Huh. Okay, so that's the thing like you were talking about is that like the signs and the planet might have alignment versus like you were mentioning mm-hmm. Aquarius in Sun doesn't super work well or something. Or is in conflict. Of it's kind. it's unconventional. Yeah. So Aquarius is the opposite of Leo on the chart. So it's mm. in detriment in the sun. Whereas it's exalted, like Leo is in the sun, in Uranus, I'm pretty sure. Mm. So like if you have an Aquarius Uranus, that means that you are like exactly what it says on the tin. Like mm-hmm. you're good there. But if you have like a fall or a detriment, it means that there will be difficulty, but detriment is more like unconventionalness of the expression. And fall is like hardship, but with wisdom. Like you learn a lot from yourself in these aspects of your life. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there's the, there's like the midheaven and descendant and mm-hmm. opposite of midheaven. I'll just say that for now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what like There's well, also like aspects there's a lot of geometry not geometry i guess geometry i don't know like (laughs) like degrees like measuring the degrees Uh. between all your placements there's a fuck ton of that which i understand by definition i can't just do it (laughs) that's the next that's the next level is what i'm hearing gotcha that's the next level deeper that's an okay cool yeah so but like there yet are there more are there more like are there more dark moon liliths just like things that have like names or is like everything here is about like the relations between them or like, uh, yeah, there's, there's one more named aspect and that's the, um, comet Chiron, which has to deal with, uh, your like self-awareness, your healing energy, your relationship to like harmony within yourself. Mm -hmm. And Chiron is usually sitting between Saturn and Uranus, like in the sky. So depending on where those two guys are, that's likely where Chiron will fall. Okay. Huh. Cool. And that's a cool one. So it, Chiron in mythology, um, if our listeners don't know, is the centaur that had to like travel around with a bunch of arrows stuck in his body. Like he could never heal fully, he could never die. He was just like suffering forever. So he was Chiron also represents teacher. like Yeah. He was also a teacher, a great teacher of a lot of heroes. Yep. Yeah, Hercules. Um, <laughs> yep. So it's, you know, it's to deal with like self-love and learning and strengths and all those kinds of things too. So yeah, that's the only other like big named aspect. We've talked about a lot of the other ones. I'm sure more more people than me know tons of other ones. 
but those are the ones that I know. Cool. Okay, so I have one personally, and Derek, do not let me just... I have brought the energy, we know. Um, don't let me <laughs> just walk all over you. Um, I do have one question <laughs> to sort of like take us out, and like this is not like a give me a one word answer and then we're done. Done. And I just, I, I am just curious. It's like, how do you recommend using all of this? Right, like that is such a good question. Like what, what, like you know, like meaning making machines. There's a lot of like self-reflective potential here there's a lot of Mm -hmm. like meaning making here there's um uh to continue to just uh bash religions um religion (laughs) for me often seems to be a a a thing that is very useful in terms of dealing with the chaoses of life you know like Mm -hmm. you know not feeling alone uh, yeah not feeling alone all of that um if anyone hasn't picked up, I don't believe in shit. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you haven't, you haven't grasped that. Um, Dane Fogdahl, godless man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, basically. That would um, be your, your, your title if we were in a fantasy setting. <laughs> indeed. The godless. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> the point, the point is, I think that like one of the best uses of, of any sort of spiritual practice is finding a a positive use for it because Mm -hmm. life is hard life um uh, life needs these these things that create camaraderie or just let you just let go of some stuff by just you know you know like there is a side of it which is like i had a really bad day and you know what and this sounds super silly but mercury is in retrograde fine that's why it happened and now i can let it go and that's awesome Mm -hmm. you know i'm not like i don't have a ton of like like belief systems that are like set in from the outside in, but I'm not saying I don't have that. It's just different, yeah. you know? Um, it's just, it's just not Jesus, you mm-hmm. know, like it's just not that. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so I'm curious what your personal use of it is, how you would recommend mm-hmm. using it and why, why you think this one in particular um, has extra value because like i could make like i could make arguments for like why i think buddhism or christianity are particularly good um belief Mm -hmm. systems and like what Mm -hmm. they what they're really good at helping people do you know Mm -hmm. versus what maybe they're not as good at etc you know Mm -hmm. um and for sure so it's it's a little complicated because as far as like using it as a tool as people do oftentimes with religion or spirituality i'm a i'm a big believer and nostalgic person in the aspect of community which frankly the way that i think a lot of astrology should be used it's not very community based it's very like introspective and it's very kind of not negatively but selfish in a way like it's it's a way for you to learn about yourself and what you put in the world and what influences you but again like in this current individualistic landscape that we live in maybe that's not necessarily a negative thing because a lot of people are self-centered in a self-righteous way but I think that you can be self-centered in a really thoughtful way and astrology personally helps me do that like I mentioned Mm. in the beginning that I, I don't really like to look at it as just like I'm a Leo, so I am a big cat that will beat you up. Like, that's not how I like to look at it. Like, I look at it as, okay, my son, my outward personality is very bold. So in terms of what that teaches me, like, I found a bunch of really great questions, like, or just reflective things to think about. Like, something for the son is you act and express yourself the way you do because, and then you can do some research. Like with Leo, I do that because I'm very loyal. I'm very considerate of how other people are doing. I really want people to have a good home base. I want people to feel respected and like they have someone in their corner. Like that's why I act and express myself the way I do. I'm loud so people notice me so people can potentially find solace in me. And that is like, I don't know, it's kind of peaceful in that way because growing up I was fed a lot of messages about being a lot or being dramatic 
or being et cetera, et cetera. And again, there's the spiritual aspect of like, why would I not be influenced by things as big as planets? But there's another part of it that's like, it's almost kind of funny. It's like, I'm a Leo. Like, that's why. But it's also not excusing, which I think a lot of people fall in the pitfall of. And they do that with all kinds of religion. There's a lot Mm. of excusing of like, well, this says this, so this is the truth. And if you don't like it, you're against me. You, you know, you are bad. But Mm. I think if we look at it from a more respectful and like in to out standpoint, it can be just a really good tool to like wonder about yourself. Like we're at an age where we're discovering a lot of things about ourselves. We're kind of falling more into exactly who we're going to be, at least for a long time. So it's a nice way to like take a step back, be like, dang, I've been like emotional lately. Like, what is that about? Like, why do I react the way that I do? And then you can look at your moon sign or like, I've been having some real issues communicating like with this one person. Like I, I feel like we just never see eye to eye. We're always confused about each other's intentions. Like this is a tool to like perhaps look into it. And even if you don't approach them, like, so my Mercury is in Taurus and yours is in Sagittarius. And I think like, even if you don't use that exactly, just be like, Hey, I was wondering if it's frustrating to you that I come off pretty laissez faire about things when you want to be more upfront about things. Mm -hmm. Like, do you find that to be true? Like, it's just a better like conversation builder. Uh, And that's why I like using astrology. Yeah. So the thing that it's, that's really striking me about it at this exact moment is that, Hmm. um, it's reminding me of a lot of, um, self-reflection tools that stem from other practices. Um, like if we look, yeah. if you were to look at say um, chakra meditation, for example, mm-hmm. um, there is the whole spiritual energy side of it. Um, yes. On the other hand, it, you can also take a look at it and say, okay, so these are seven aspects uh, of like life that you can use to like focus on. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. It feels very much like that in the sense of like you, there are different versions. It's it's a, it's a framework in which you can approach things, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, or of course you can just say, I'm a Leo, therefore the end, right? Like, and yep, you're welcome to do that, but yeah, no, no, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no shade there. Just it's, it's, it's very, <laughs> it's very interesting. Um, I am curious and this is just Hmm. my own lack of knowledge is uh the astrologies like the it's it's tied in with the planets which is tied in with uh greek and roman mythology in particular or or pre-christian roman mythology um Mm -hmm. and i'm curious what is the origin of astrology like the way that we see it now uh yeah yeah like is it a does it trace its roots all the way back to the greeks is it a thing is it one of those strange things that came up in victorian england when they were weirdly into like witchcraft for a little while you know like yeah tarot um, and stuff like that yeah yeah yeah. like i'm just curious like what is what is its modern origin? Because I could also hear, like, I would also not be surprised if you told me, like, listen, it, this at what we have now is an amalgam of like different stuff from all the fuck over. You know, I'm just curious. For sure. So, um, Western astrology is usually what this type of astrology that I look at is called, and it's also the most popular. And mm-hmm. Western, like you were hinting at, it definitely nods to Greek. For sure. There's also a very popular system, um, Vedic astrology, which is practiced in India. A lot of people practice that kind of astrology. Um, Africa has a bunch of systems of astrology. Um, oh, lots of different Asian cultures do. Yeah. Um, you know, the Mayan calendar is based off of astrology. So mm-hmm. this is just, you know, again, in it's not super whitewashy, but it is very Greek. In yeah, it, it feels Greek by way of like Anglican. 
Anglican is probably a better way to describe it. Yes. And, you know, again, in America, that's ten that tends to be what we hold up on a pedestal is anything mm-hmm. Western, Anglican, etc. Um, but a lot where people are getting into Vedic astrology, which you will have a different chart in Vedic astrology because there's a different way of measuring things um, through that system. I believe it. I believe it. Mm-hmm. Wild. Yeah, it's super huh. cool. Huh. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. Derek, do you have any wonders? Um, I think I'm still in shock. <laughs> <laughs> um, that that the uh, southern node seems to have broken Derek a little bit. <laughs> I mean, Which, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, well, because because like I I think like I I had known about the the main sign right. Yeah. And then when I went to college, I was hearing inklings of these other signs and like these mm-hmm. other things. When I moved to LA, I learned about the other signs in the houses. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, like these like nodes and moon, moons, dark moon Liliths and stuff like that. And yeah. these other extra layers and like the, the like the other ways you, you can divine these things or whatever, if that mm-hmm. if that is even the right word. Mm-hmm. It is really cool and, and, and interesting and it's like almost mythic in a way that like i wasn't expecting to feel at like eight o'clock in the morning um <laughs> it's not every day i get to wake up and like feel like oh yeah like the ancient like we're using the ancient art of astrology to mm-hmm. to read how we act and it's like you know like yeah to your point like we derive meaning from from anything right mm-hmm. um but i think like Sometimes I really wonder, I, I, I think as of late, I've been like really thinking about like, like, why am I so afraid of like losing the quote unquote good fight? Um, mm. And like, I think, and I haven't been able to like pinpoint like why, like, because all the reasons that I would have thought were like, oh, well, it, I didn't really lose. Like, I still got out of it. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I don't know why I cling to that, to that kind of fear. And I think like... Mm-hmm. Um, and like, sometimes I, I often wonder, like, like, ugh, like, I feel like I've lost so many times. Like, why do I keep trying, uh, all, all these things to like, you know, be, be, a, be a good person and, 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 and to do the right thing to do the quote unquote heroic thing. And then like to hear like, yeah, he, her, heroism in a past life. And you'll have a fear of losing because you probably lost. I was like, dang, that yeah. explains so much. And it's like. It, 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 in a way that it like it makes me feel okay like ah oh, this has happened before this will ha- this will continue yeah. to happen like whatever wh- like my soul is just in this current jar that is my body and in then in in, in in the next life i'll probably continue to to be attempting to be heroic and continuing to to have a fear of losing mm-hmm. and that was like in a weird way like really liberating just now um i, I think, love that yeah and I think my my brain and and heart are just trying to wrap my around that a little bit because it's like, yeah, I just I think about so many instances where like, yeah, like you know we went twelve rounds in the ring and you know mm-hmm. technically lost but we're still standing and like that I think like, yeah I think like that hearing that in this moment I think was like. I guess like more of an of like an awakening or the hug or like a mm. a pat on the back or a five star on the back or a high five. <laughs> it was like something I didn't know I needed. So that's what's yeah. super cool about it. I find a lot of peacemaking with the self in astrology. Like I when I first did my own chart, I you know I was like Leo Sun, Leo Moon, Leo Mercury, like Jesus Christ. But then I would look at it and you know when I was little and I was I just knew my sun sign. I was like, I'm a Leo, but like, I don't really feel like a Leo. And a lot of people have that sentiment. And then I found out I was a Virgo rising and I was like, there it is. There's that aspect of me. It's like, I really portray a lot of like grace and I portray a lot of togetherness and, you know, like I've always got myself in a row is something that I like to portray and I subconsciously portray. And I was like, that's very not Leo, but that is very Virgo. And that makes a lot of sense why that is the way that is now. Yeah. And it's like, again, whether it's you were born at this time in this place and you were imbued with all this celestial energy or you read something that, 
you know, made a synapse in your brain. Either way, it's like it's all energy. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, Taylor, I would love uh, if after we close out, if you could send me some links that I could include in the episode description to where like maybe you got started learning about this stuff. Um, yes. so other people who listen mm-hmm. could be uh, could start that journey if they are uh, develop an interest after listening to this episode, which would be buck wild. But I think That'd be like super cool. it's definitely cool to read up on. And like stars are here; they're going to be here for another couple bajillion years. So <laughs> Way longer than us. Yep. Oh, Enjoy yes. them while they're still burning, baby. <laughs> um, uh, otherwise, Taylor, where uh, where can we find you on the interwebs these days? Yes, my things have changed a little bit since last time I was on here. So allow me to plug um, the Instagram account that you can follow me on is 28 underscore TST. Uh, that's for 28 Taylor Ann, which is just kind of my me thing. And TST is for Think and Some Thoughts, which is a podcast that I am currently developing. Hey, Ooh. do you want to give excited. a so little? You can find me there. Do you want to give a little quick pitch of what that's going to be? Or are we not there yet? Which I totally understand. No, I can give a pitch for sure. Pitch, so, pitch. Pitch, pitch, pitch. So my pitch is, well, I'll give you my intro. Hi, hello, how are you? My name is Taylor, and I've been thinking some thoughts. And on this podcast, this is a place where I think any thoughts that come into my mind, I invite friends into the fold to think their thoughts with me. It's an anything podcast, and you are welcome to join. Hey. All right. Ta-da! All right. Very nice. Is there Solid is pitch. there 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 probably is not a link or anything yet beyond the Instagram? There is not yet, but I will be um, you know, trying to do the Spotify, the Apple Podcasts, and I will have a visual podcast on YouTube at my YouTube channel, which is also now twenty eight underscore T S T. Very nice. Everyone go like and subscribe. Thank uh, you. Smash that notification bell. Smash that bell, um, man! Visual podcast, uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's a. Uh, I mean, we could do a separate episode on the state of the creator economy and the podcast <gasps> space, oh, but it's visual so podcast awkward. is becoming the norm. Um, so, it dang, is. we are becoming old men, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> you've done two visuals. We have. You've, we have you've delved. Yeah, we've delved. We probably will do another visual again. Yeah, I'm. <sighs> I like radio, okay? God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will say, Dane, maybe we yeah. should talk about what we're going to do for our 100th episode because that's coming up soon. Oh, what? my no. God. Um, no, so. it's not. <laughs> it's, yeah. Don't say those words. <laughs> those, are, those are stressful words, Derek. <laughs> Derek. Derek. I also Derek. have a really great idea for an episode where you don't have to talk a lot, Dane. <laughs> <laughs> What, what is or that? I could be the one to talk. I figured out the topic I would talk about. So, Wait, oh, okay. You yeah. talk. You talk plenty. I'm an asshole. That's what's going on. <laughs> you're an Don't eccentric Aquarius. <laughs> yeah, you're just you're just an eccentric wizard boy. I am an eccentric <laughs> wizard boy, and frankly, we have been recording more and more in the morning, which is good for me and bad for you. <laughs> yeah, it's good though. Yeah. I mean, like I bring in some chill energy and I sap some of that life force from you, and then. Yeah, I by the end, my day. by the end, I am tired, and you are like, oh, man, I feel great. Yeah, <laughs> I, need to I feel go. great, and I have all these bad creative ideas that are going to be awesome. Um, I don't yeah. know our like our our uh, avatar, but for star signs, I don't know that one might be good. That one might be Flunky good. Lit. Yeah, yeah. Unlike what, the stars, the night they were born. Yeah. See, this sounds like the beginning. Like you could make this into like a Harlequin romance novel, like that. And then it would oh just be God. like that shit would fly off the shelves, like off the Amazon. <laughs> oh yeah, off yeah. the Kindles. <sighs> yeah, you just have to find the right level of smut. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, uh, brother. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, well, thank you so much for being with us here today, Taylor. Uh, thank you for having me back. I love the pod. Thank you for coming back. This was great. This was a really fun, different episode. Um, we haven't done something like this before, so 
Yeah. Really appreciate mm-hmm. you doing that and making writing 40 pages of material. You're going to have to yeah. send that to us too because I'm so curious. Yeah. I will. It's nearly done. My condensed one's done, but my full one is almost done. Yeah, okay. send us documents, send us um send us links. Yeah, the links for people would be super cool for sure. Yeah. Yep. I'll send my favorite links um just for like basic charts um and a couple ones that help you dive a little bit deeper into meanings. Perfect. Yeah, is Heck this yeah. the sort of thing? Oh, God, see, fuck me. Anyways, um, yes. is, there, is this is this the sort of thing that people should go to the internet? Should they go find books? Both? Is this a thing that you need a teacher for? That's that's like when I whenever I run up against something I'm interested in, sometimes I get like locked. I find myself locked out because I'm like, what do I need to actually go a step forward? Mm. Um, yes. So. Wait for it. I'm looking up in my shared with me documents because I got my chart read for me by a wonderful person that I found on TikTok. The lovely human that did my full star chart reading was Ryan Kush. Ryan K-U-S-H. He did a beautiful breakdown of my entire chart, including my North Node, my South Node, my Chiron, a lot of the stuff that we talked about. So he did a wonderful job. You can find a lot of those people on Instagram and TikTok. They're super informative, super great. But yeah, I'll plug the websites in specific. But books, it depends on when they were published. And it also depends if you're interested in Western versus Vedic versus any of the other Mm. types of astrologies. I don't have any specific Mm -hmm. recommendations for those, but. Sounds good. Sounds to me like one of the ones where you, you, it's best if you get introduced with a person. Yeah. It's more fun that way. It's kind of like tarot in that way, Mm -hmm. in my opinion, Mm -hmm. which I also love. Um, like I found my own deck and I was able to like learn some things, but we have a bunch of people we went to high school with that did that do tarot now. So I was able to talk with people and learn more. Fair. I have feelings about tarot. I really do. <gasps> we can talk about those feelings. I hate the hero fan. Date. I hate it so much. <laughs> so oh, well. much. <laughs> this will be know. interesting. I fucking hate it. <laughs> I enjoy it. I've, I've derived some good things. From the hero so. fan? Really? Really? Yeah, from tarot, yeah, yeah. Oh no, no, I'm not talking about no, tarot. No, 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 tarot. Down. Oh, oh, not oh, from that card. I don't know. I don't remember any of my tarot readings, but yeah, no. <laughs> tarot's I just, tarot's no tarot. Tarot's fun and good. Nothing, nothing oh, against tarot. Oh, I just card. hate the hero fan. I just hate oh. it. I'll take death any day, all day, any day. <laughs> or the tower. Oh yeah, Dane, done. Deal. The godless I'm in. man <laughs> will take the hero fan and the tower any day. Find out what happens next time on Godless. <laughs> oh, it's funny uh, you say you hate it, Dane, because it's tradition, conformity, and morality and ethics, which oh, are wow. things that Aquariuses are very concerned with. That is, yeah, wow. When, when it's all taken to and like the hero fan. It's just, it's just it, that the word is very much about like status quo and like dog, which you dogmatism. Hate as an Aquarius. And I fucking hate it. I hate it so much. Now you know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all it's all related. I don't know. Taylor has been great to fucking have you. I'm still bringing the air energy. Derek, <laughs> love you to bits. Fucking end of episode. Yeah. All right. Cue Goodbye, the everyone. guitar. Guitar. Oh, yeah. Go. Yeah. We have a new song. It's Sandbar by Dane Fogdell. That's our oh my outro song. God, you what? Wait, where did you? F- Not important. We'll get into I that. I have later. it I made because I made you that music video. Because we love video. you. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So yeah, yeah, I'm gonna right now. Everyone say bye, and then I'm gonna in a rudely cut in the song. Bye. 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 Stuff. Out here on the sand, not far from.